I feel totally disempowered in London because it's so expensive. The housing, the house prices. Yeah, well. Very. <laughs> Rent is really expensive. And everybody's in survival mode and it's each to their own. It's it's kind of hard to look out for thy neighbour. Yeah. When you're struggling as much as your neighbour, probably more than your neighbour. I remember when I was at college, um, I I was studying theatre, so um, there were, like, we were encouraged to go and see theatre ourselves and um, I really struggled to afford it a lot of the time so I would have to go out of my way to make sure because I had a bus pass that allowed it for free that I could like get to the National Theatre I would save money that way so to make sure that I could afford to, the ticket. It's disempowering every every April when they put up the price in January. I, let me show you my age now. I remember getting on the bus when it was 30p so we used to go to the West End Chuckadero with my one pound bus pass or oh, travel yeah. card for one pound fifty zones one to six that lasts from nine a.m. till twelve <laughs> o'clock. You, we was you out. Yeah, we was out on three pounds a day. Yeah, I would say um, actually, I feel like um, now that I'm thinking more about it as well, I feel like with this new wave of change and gentric gentrification of certain areas, I feel like some specific areas are losing. Um, might be losing their culture because of gentrification and all these new builds and all these um, new shops coming in these like in Brick Lane for example there's a lot of um, coffee shops and <laughs> all these different places and I feel like that would disempower parts of London because of that loss of culture. The gradual taking away of local businesses of local and um, pushing like local people out I just don't I don't know how that's going to stop unless something uh, systematic changes in a big way. I think the way that we're building and the, uh, um, the, the way we treat ourselves as individuals and think of ourselves only and yeah, separate ourselves. I think it, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's going to get better. That Travelling alone at night, especially after the current incident of Sarah, I think it has been really um, traumatizing for me as well. You know, because of, you know, cases like these, would I feel confident enough to be roaming around in the city at 10 p.m., for example? I mean, the incident happened, it wasn't even that late at night as well, which really got me thinking that, you know, are we all in a safe place, you know, especially women, are we, are we all traveling, you know, obviously we can all be in using the same transportation modes and links, but are we, are we still in the safe space? I don't know how they can come up with a particular solution to this, but getting scared travel to travel at night in one of the most developed cities in the world. So I believe something can be done about it. You know, safety is something that has affected my confidence and to some extent, it's <laughs> plummeted to some extent because of this uh, incident. I think it's empowering the way that, given certain circumstances, we managed to pull together any race, any location, even people outside of London. Kind of like you have a con common interest and you also have a common concern. I feel like social media has kind of heightened that a lot because although social media can be the make or break of you, if used in a good way, it can it can help. I definitely agree with that. I think it it can bring in that sense of community, that sense of everyone wanting to, to come together and um, help mm. each other. I definitely agree with that, and I think that that uh, that definitely brings a sense of empowerment. Being being able to like know how to get around is is cool and empowering. But as is being able to get around on my own now we can get to other places that we struggled to get to before and if you remember rightly there were certain places in certain parts of south london where you oh had, yeah because you had to have a paper ticket and you was you actually ended up spending more mm. money just to get to somewhere that was classed as still in london the the staff in tube uh, like in tube station and even the people if uh, uh, being new to the city, of course, navigation and exit is a little bit of a problem. So I have lost and I have uh, used exit 
like different exit rather than using a particular exit so i believe that if you ask for help they are very helpful right yeah i think i really i think actually transport is one of the most empower empowering parts of living in london being able to get around i really like that very various environmental um, aspects to spe specifically with the cycling tracks how much they have uh, encouraged people to do cycling has been getting a lot better over the last or even during during lockdown they've been building um i think some of them are temporary but they've been building so many cycle lanes it's so much nicer to cycle around london now especially uh, parts of central london have got proper segregated bike lanes that is so in terms of it's in terms of that it's so nice to be able to get around either by the the um, tube network or but for free on bikes or for cheap on a, a rented forest bike or something. One of the uh, other empowering thing, um, uh, people are here. I feel that uh, the infrastructure here make you feel uh, independent and that infrastructure maybe institutional infrastructure financial infrastructure like which includes job opportunities um if you go uh, if, if i talk about infrastructure if i go up the awareness amongst people i think everything empowers makes me feel empowered and and in in turn make me be independent and make independent choices so yes in terms of empowering um I would say being able to connect with people from different cultures, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, I love food, like I said, <laughs> and connecting with people through um, the food that they eat. I guess how seeing how small London is um, really makes me feel empowered and makes me feel happy that I'm part of the community of Londoners. London is, I would say, it's a hotspot, which is a city I would say that a lot of people look up to for now and also many many years ahead uh they would hopefully uh you know we would be a city showing them that you know there is equal pay everyone's invited to talk no idea is uh you know no idea is rubbish every idea is respected everyone has um a way to express uh, his uh, belief or his thought about something or about a topic and that what empowers i think london and what could empower people to be a londoner yeah, it's it's a city full of opportunities and um, and I would say that a lot of people look up to us. A lot of people want to take our, you know, ideas into, you know, sort of their own practice. So, yeah. A lot depends on the people who make a part of the city. I hope we can just head in the right direction from now and reduce inequality. At the end of the day, the change starts with you.